Nothing is more fun to me than a boss fight in a JRPG. Now, there's a whole bunch of crazy ones in a couple new JRPGs that have come out recently. I've played a whole bunch. It was almost hard to make this list, but I'm going to give you five of them that I just think are absolutely incredible and just super fun, have good replayability, good mechanics, good story, music, basically just really good fights in general. Since we're discussing boss fights, usually the more crazy ones are the final bosses or ones in the middle or towards the end of the game. So there will be spoilers in this video. I'm going to let you guys know the games before I actually show the boss fight or spoilers or any of that. And I will have a lot more info and timestamps in the comments and description. So let's get into five absolutely amazing boss fights from some new age JRPGs. Number five on our list, we are going to be discussing the true final boss from Yeez 8 Lacrimosa of Donna. If you have not played this game or seen the true final boss, click the time scamp to skip this number five spot, or honestly, just come back to the video after you've played these five selection of games, because you should, they're really sick. Origin of life, the source of all. That, that is the source? You're telling me that, that thing? It's so beautiful, though. Do you hear the piano? First, I'd like to mention getting to this true final boss is pretty badass in itself. You have to get your reputation and your camp way up. And this game, you're stuck on an island. You have to rebuild your camp. It makes a lot of sense, honestly, to get that all built up. And then it rewards you with this true final boss section. Now, the thing about this true final boss is it made my fingers hurt. This game, if you know the combat, relies a lot on reflexes, dodging, and timing your blocks. Now, this boss requires you to spam your dodge and block so much. And by spam, I mean get those perfect dodge and blocks. It was outrageously fun, almost tiring fun in a way. Now, I was playing on nightmare mode, which requires a lot more precise timing. Any mode you play on, this boss is going to give you a run for your money. This boss has some fantastic scenery, fantastic music, and the mechanics of it. Your fingers are going to have a damn workout when you're done with this boss. One of the coolest new age final bosses I have personally played. Next, we're going to talk about Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind for our number four spot. So if you haven't seen any of the data fights in this game, then I wouldn't watch if you don't want to. But if you know me, these are some of my favorite boss fights in all of video games. I think they're fantastic. We're going to be talking about Marluxia's data fight here. Now, I love this fight for a variety of different things. The music is incredible. The mechanics are really fun for this fight. It's a lot of memorizing, blocking, and dodging patterns. And I know you do that a lot in these fights, but it's like really fast paced. And you have to watch out for all of his red moves that will happen in a near instant. So really testing your reflexes. And it's almost like a dance watching him with the rose petals on the scythe. I think it's such an incredible fight. And then the challenge factor of it, I really enjoy. Now, I know this isn't the most challenging data fight, but in specifically, I like when the fights trick you, they troll you a little bit. When you get to the end of this fight, you get him the one HP, you're like, ooh, I'm done. But the game actually trolls you at that point and he comes near you with his Kingdom Hearts 2 throwback cutscene where he whispers in your ear, licks your earlobe like a weirdo. And from there, you have to dodge an even crazier desperation move. I think that's fantastic. Specifically the way they did it where you're dodging his scythe going back and forth and back and forth. It's just like he's in rage mode. He wants this fight to end. So I think this fight is just super incredible and really wanted to highlight it for this video. Number three on our list goes to a boss from Dragon Quest XI, Echoes of Elusive Age. Now, this game was my very first Dragon Quest and I love this game so much and going into it, I expected hard turn-based battles, right? Damn, the final boss gave me what I wanted. So this game gave me a lot of fun from its turn-based combat system. And the final boss 
showed a like struggle like a tug of war pull that a turn-based combat system is supposed to have he was dumping me i was dumping him it was stressful the whole time but kept me on the edge of my seat it was such a fun fight while the aesthetics all around me were just so crazy like this fight really felt like the stakes were high now using your moves in this game you have to really think because this guy will wipe out your team even at max level max 99 so i really appreciated that from a turn-based final boss i really wish more games would follow that because i hate when a final boss is way too easy or easier than a previous boss in the game so this dragon quest blew my mind i cannot wait to play the rest of them so a very memorable final boss for me and definitely one of the best final bosses i've played from some new jrpgs that i've released in the past five years the number two spot on our list goes to stranger of paradise final fantasy origin now i can't lie this game doesn't got much else going for it but the bosses and the boss design is incredible i really really loved it in this game now this game is more of like a souls like side final fantasy game as you guys may know so the bosses is what they focused on i'm gonna highlight tiamat because this boss fight was really the one that whoops everyone's ass and is the, everyone's first wall in the game. Having both its phases be almost very different in his movesets also is really cool. The design of the fight is really nice in my opinion. Aesthetically, it's really intense and all of his fire moves light up the floor. And a couple of those fireballs or lasers hit you and you're dead. So I really enjoyed this fight. Probably my favorite fight in the whole game. If not, it's probably the final boss. But I really want to highlight this one because this is the one where it's like you're going to learn the combat system here now for the number one spot and i should mention these are in no particular order these are just five bosses i think are awesome it goes to kaburagi from soul hackers 2 the new atlas game that just released also i just did a review on this game and i think it's pretty damn good so if you want to go check that out that will be in the description so this game i think is really damn fun and it's actually the main first story boss that you come across and you're probably like why would you put that on here because i think it's really well designed if you go in there a little too over leveled you'll probably dump it but i didn't i went in probably a little under leveled or maybe right on level and it was a big challenge for a first story boss for sure i also loved the way this fight goes he summons this demon that puts an abyssal veil on him which blocks his weakness so you're trying to take her out get your stacks up so you could do multi damage on all of them to try to get his summon demons away while still doing damage on him and that abyssal veil really gets in the way it's a fun little mind game challenge to go back and forth with it was a really enjoyable boss for me even more so than the couple ones i've done after I hope you guys enjoyed this video as well as finding maybe some new games you want to try out or just agreeing with me in general. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me or if you have any bosses that you want to recommend or talk about. I love hearing anything about bosses or boss design, so make sure to drop a comment below. If you enjoy my content, please leave a like and make sure to subscribe and stay because I'm going to be uploading a lot of new videos. So once again, have a fantastic day, everyone, and I'll see you next time.